Our first lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson comes from the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. Luke, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17, and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
I'm Pastor Stephanie Smith from Cathedral in the Night, an outdoor church, much like the church that Pastor Linda and your church participate in in, in Providence. Our ministry is in Northampton, Massachusetts, and it's wonderful to be here with you as we celebrate today the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, as well as remembering Epiphany, which was this week on January 6th. It's good to be here together as we grapple with these texts and the unexpected ways that God enters into each of our lives. So let us begin with the baptism of Jesus. Here we find John, the cousin of Jesus, out in the wilderness, wild as he is, baptizing and teaching everyone out on the edges about repentance and baptism preparing the way again for Jesus. And who shows up in the long line of people who need forgiveness and repentance and a second start from the sin and the mistakes of their lives, but Jesus himself. Now this is the very beginning of Jesus's ministry. So no one knows who Jesus is perhaps. He hasn't done anything yet. But we think of Jesus as being perfect, and yet here he is in a line full of sinners to be baptized by John. Notice he doesn't just stand on the edges watching what's happening, maybe giving John a break and saying, I've got it from here. No, he stands in line in that long line of sinners to also receive this gift of baptism, of renewal, of forgiveness, of wiping clean the slate, of second chances, of connection to a family greater than the one we were born into. And there Jesus is, perhaps a surprise to John as he approaches. And John tries to get out of it and says no, but Jesus insists. Why would Jesus be in a long line of sinners? It's hard to believe, but perhaps Jesus himself wished for clean slate, had made mistakes of his own, and needed this blessing as he began a new chapter in his life, as his ministry began. It's a ritual that we still participate in today. But something amazing happens when Jesus is baptized that the sky opens up and the spirit descends upon him in bodily form, like a dove saying, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. But what is the spirit well pleased with about Jesus? Jesus has done nothing in his ministry yet. And still the spirit says, not only are you loved Jesus, but that the spirit is pleased with Jesus. Jesus has not done anything for anyone to be pleased with, perhaps. His ministry is just beginning. But that's what's extraordinary about God's love. The spirit is pleased and loves Jesus for just being a child of God. Not for anything Jesus has done. That love comes first. But we try and flip that around, don't we? We want to chase after love. We think we have to be good. We have to do the right things. We have to try and be perfect. And we chase after that love to be noticed, to be worthy of, by doing, doing, doing. And here the Spirit says, it is not about what you have done, but by who you are a child of God, a member of this family. And therefore the spirit is pleased. In this way, the spirit reminds all of us that love and that being pleased with comes first. Not once we've earned it, not once we've done the right things, but it is first in our lives. It is not something that we chase after. It has already been given. We haven't earned it. We don't need to do anything to keep it. 
It is simply a free gift given because we are God's children. And as so many others have said before me, that in this way, our lives are merely a thank you for the gift that was given and not earned to each of us. That gift of love and grace, forgiveness, and a family bigger than the one we were born into. But then that begs the question, how do we live then? If our life is a thank you for this love that has been given so freely. Perhaps that's why in the same week we have just celebrated Epiphany. The story of the wise men who came from a foreign country following a star and a premonition and a prediction that a king was born. And if only they followed the star, they would find that king to worship. Well, the star brought them and they ended up in the city because that's where they expected to find a king. Instead, they find the current king, King Herod, who listens to them and hears that they are looking for this new king and he is afraid and he is threatened. So he brings them to him and says, go diligently search for this baby. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I too may go and worship him. Now the wise men didn't know what we know, which is Herod is a man filled with fear. A simple baby being born in the world filled him with so much fear that he later works to extinguish all the babies of that age for fear that this child would take over his kingdom. Now we know that time will take care of his fleeting power. And Jesus has come from, for something so much greater than earthly power. But Herod lives in fear and short-sightedness. So the wise men go on their way and they do find that child. They find Jesus. They worship him. And then the story ends with that they had a dream and they were told in that dream not to return to Herod, but to return home by another way. To return home by another way. Perhaps this is how we are to live our lives, as a thank you, to go home by another way. We are all going home, back to our creator, as we live each day on this earth. But we are called to go home by another way. This week has been a difficult week as we, ce not celebrate, but we remember the anniversary of the Capitol riot. And we know we live in a world and in a country that is so divided politically. We're still living in a pandemic that people are arguing about how we should live and respond to it. Our world is dark and full of violence and hatred. It's all overwhelming. And yet we hear these epiphany words that we are to go home by another way. But what is that way? It's the way that Jesus lived. Now, I'm not saying we have to live as Jesus did. Jesus did that for us. But Jesus' life reminded us and continues to teach us that it is love is the way that we will return home. Because this world, this world expects us and conditions us to think only of ourselves or the few people that we love, to be motivated by fear, to shame others so that we feel protected, to try and climb the ladder and gain as much power and prestige as we can. But this is not the way home Jesus has called us to. Jesus has called us to stand as the wise men did, to protect the vulnerable. They were not afraid of Herod. They were protecting Jesus. So they went home another way. We too are called to stand on the edge as Jesus did. For if Jesus stands on the edge, no one is excluded. We are called to go home by another way, 
to stand with those who are vulnerable, to let their voices be heard, to put an end to prejudices, to discrimination, to racism and sexism, and all the things that divide us, to welcome the immigrant, to stand with the poor, the widow, and those imprisoned, and to change the world by going home another way. Now that can all seem so overwhelming, but I know that each and every one of you have opportunities every day to make the world a little brighter, to be that light that the darkness cannot overcome. And in small little ways each day, we are going home by another way. As we work to forgive ourselves, to forgive others, to welcome the stranger, to understand our differences, to work through the hard things and to lift one another up so that all may have what they need, not that a few may have what they want. So today, let us hear the spirit saying to each and every one of us, you are my beloved with whom I am well pleased and may we all strive to go home by another way. Amen. Baptizing waters in by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King. Heirs of salvation, trusting His promise, faithfully now. Oh, 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 oh,
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.